What is next for the Ottawa Senators in the aftermath of being eliminated by the Buffalo Sabres in the first round? Seven games, Jack Eichel, the overtime winner. You were there. You saw it. It was a nightmare. I still hate it. What's next for this team, though? I don't quite know, but we are going to find out in relatively quick order here. Now, really with the rules of this series, every offseason is bound to be interesting because we're going to have quite a bit of turnover year in and year out, but obviously we're still reeling from the fact that we won the President's Trophy only to get bounced in the first round. Now you look ahead to what this offseason is going to be. Goaltending wise, is there going to be a lot of turnover? Yes, because Craig Anderson doesn't want to come back and Aiden Hill and Anders Nilsson uh, were a bit of a disappointment. So we're going to be looking at bringing in replacements in goal. I don't think Gustafson and Shogard are going to be good enough yet to do that. One of them might push for a backup spot, but that's about it. Defensively, now, we could bring back Matt Niskanen if we cared to. I mean, four million bucks for him, though. Eh, I don't really know about that. Ryan Graves wants to come back. I'm interested in bringing him back. So, Daniel Chara at 45, is he going to retire? We don't know. The issue there, of course, is we have some younger defensemen who are going to be pushing for a spot. Bernard Docker, Thompson, Molanin could even push for a spot, although he doesn't want to come back, so we might be losing Christian Molanin. And then forward-wise, you know, we don't have any major contracts to sign, thankfully, but we are losing Ilya Kovalchuk. We can bring him back if we want to, but he wants a raise. And at 39 years old, we don't know what his overall is going to be, so that's a huge risk. Bobby Ryan's near $9 million comes off the book, but again, 35, he could retire, and if he comes back, it'd be around $2 bucks. but still, he could drop to an 81 overall and not really be worth it, especially when you have the likes of Norris... Uh, Batherson and so many others who are going to be looking to take a step up this year. Uh, a shout out as well to Nick Paul, who apparently will not be rejoining us for next season. So we have a lot to get to. We cannot get to said things until we know for sure what the salary cap is going to be for next season. So let's move ahead as Ryan Graves returns to the roster. We're going to have to send somebody down. It might as well be Craig Anderson, who doesn't want to come back. So... I don't really care about his morale. There might be a bit of a morale crisis on this team. It really does depend on, you know, just how attached certain players were to their teammates who were going to be leaving. Uh, but we'll deal with that as it is. 77 locker room chemistry as it stands. But, of course, in terms of re-signing players, we can't do anything yet until we know what the cap situation is, which we will know in a matter of seconds because the Philadelphia Flyers have won the Stanley Cup. And the cap for next season is $71.7 million, which means we are allowed to spend up to $76.7 million. And the max contract that we can sign a player to, the math is easy on that one, $9.3 million is now the max that somebody can be signed to, which is incredibly nice. Of course, we're allowed to sign someone up to 10%, no greater than 10% of the team's total cap. So it's pretty obvious 9.3 million is the number there. So again, the Philadelphia Flyers win the cup. Let's take a look at how that went down. We know Buffalo didn't make it to the final. They made it to the conference final, though, where Philly beat them. And the Flyers beat the Arizona Coyotes in six. So good on the Coyotes. Let's take a look at the Flyers roster. And the good thing is I only have to hit down once, indeed. As we take a look here, Joel Farabee was great. Eric Stahl goes to Philly and has a tremendous postseason. Voracek was great. Of course, they acquired Brian Rust in a trade. I mean, that's it, that's a phenomenal roster now, isn't it? I mean, even Nolan Patrick, there are only 11 games played. Defensively, it's Ghost Bear, Provorov. Adam Larson is there, as is Michael Delzato, who was a plus 14 in the playoffs. And the goaltender. You know him, you love him, he's better than an 84, that's fairly obvious, but say it with me now. One, two, three, Kata Hat leads the way, as you would have expected. So the awards, as we wrap up the 2021-2022 season, it is the third straight year to begin this series that an Eastern Conference team has won the Stanley Cup. Of course, we won the President's Trophy and it meant nothing. Kucherov wins the Art Ross and the Hart, the Norris to OEL, Lady Bing to Tyler Sagan. The Calder, indeed, went to Grigory Denisenko. Farabee wins the Con Smythe. That's crazy. Tuka Rask wins the Vesna. The Jennings to Grubauer and Jake Allen. The Masterton to Charlie McAvoy. Biddington in Calgary wins the Jack Adams. O'Reilly wins the Selkie. Kucherov to Ted Lindsay. And Tyler Sagan 
the Rocket Richard. And in the AHL, Sasha Pastujov put up the most points, he was league MVP, he scored the most goals, and he was the top rookie. <laughs> top defenseman, Hayden Fleury. Top goaltender, Mikhail Berdine. And MVP of the playoffs, Jonathan Bernier for your Colorado Eagles. Your Calder Cup winning Colorado Eagles. So we now know what lies ahead. The question is, in terms of resigning anybody, who are we going to bring back? Craig Anderson doesn't want to come back. He's gone. Aiden Hill does want to come back, but again, I'm not impressed with Aiden Hill. I think we shop his rights, and we look to move on from him. I mean, he ha he's had a 900 save percentage in 50 regular season games with us. In the playoffs, he was okay and then kind of fell off. I think the Aiden Hill exper you know, experiment here in Ottawa is done and I think we'll be looking to move on from Anders Nilsson as well. Marcus Hogberg also probably on the way out because Bednar and Shaw need to be signed. Shaw up to a 70 now, by the way, which is tremendous. Defensively, Brandstrom is going to need to be re-signed. And we are going to take care of that again. Every single one of these goaltenders we're going to let go of, except for the unsigned. Eric Brandstrom. Let's see what we can do for you sir a three-year deal works brandstrom wants to be paid thank god everyone has to accept the 85 percent trick this is going to be eight million dollars for three years so bobby ryan's money immediately went to eric brandstrom and i was kind of hoping he'd be slightly cheaper now the argument is if he hits the open market is he going to sign for more we can't afford to lose him. We need him on this team with Thomas Shabbat. They need to, you know, back end this defense. We're going to sign him to that because I think he would be offer sheeted for more money than what we can afford. So we'll resign Brandstrom. I think because of that, Matt Niskanen, who's looking for a raise, that's simply not going to happen. I can't afford to pay Matt Niskanen any more than what I'm already paying him. He did have a pretty good season. But not an amazing season, and he was pretty rough in the playoffs, too, with just two points and a minus three. So Niskanen is going to be dropped. Ryan Graves, who was making $2 million, now only wants two point five. That's not too bad. And Ryan Graves has been great for us. So, you know, if we can sign Ryan Graves to that, what exactly would this be price-wise? 2175 can we afford to pay Ryan Graves? That is the question. I don't know if we can. So Dan Ochara hasn't officially retired. Wants almost two million bucks. I love Big Z, obviously, as a Bruins fan, but so Dan Ochara's gone at 45 for that price. I'm gonna hold off on signing Graves and Chara, at least for a bit. Uh, Ilya Lyubushkin, we can bring back. Ooh. Hold on. Let's uh, let's see if he's willing to take a cheaper deal because I like Lyubushkin as a depth defenseman. 895 for him, so we'd have to go 900 k If he'll sign that, I'm good with it. Christian Milanen, love him, but unfortunately he's going to be gone. Uh, Cam Deneen. Uh, apparently the deal's not up for him yet. That's very weird. That's fine. Uh, let's see, the winger's here. Justin Williams, we don't know if he's going to retire or not. He was making 1.7. He wants a raise. There's no way that's going to happen. And then from here, we'll have to double-check with a lot of these guys. We'll have to double check with a lot of them. Kovalchuk, 3.4, now wants 5 million bucks. Again, I just I don't think it's going to happen for Kovalchuk and Bobby Ryan. I just don't think I can afford to give them that amount of money. So we are going to hold off on re-signing those particular players for the moment until after the draft. So with that, let's sim ahead. Brandstrom signs, which is fantastic. Leah Bushkin signs as well. So that's a good deal for us there. As the Vancouver Canucks actually won a lottery, that's impressive. Only in a video game, the Canucks will have the number one overall pick. As we get to retired players, and Jason Spezza would have loved to have brought him back to Ottawa. He retires. Justin Williams retires as well. Corey Perry, Jeff Carter, Miko Koivu, amongst others. Defensively, Zdeno Chara does retire. So we don't have to worry about bringing back Big Z. His career is done, as is Duncan Keith, Sprint Seabrooks. And goaltender-wise, no Craig Anderson retirement, but Smith, Howard, and Grice all call it a day. So Chara is gone. That pretty much solves that issue, as Justin Williams, also gone, becomes a coach. 
Don't know if we'll sign him. Keith, Carter, Chara, and Grice all became scouts. Good amount of uh, retired scouts here. So we'll see what happens with Z. And then draft interviews I'm not really going to worry about. So let's do this. Let's go to the draft. And I think the story of the day here, now number one, of course, Melnick will get a selection out of our top five picks. I'm not going to spin the wheel until I know what our top five picks are. I don't imagine we'll be able to trade up. But we are going to look to uh, sell off some assets here and gain a hell of a lot of draft picks if we can. So goalie-wise, we're not moving any of these options outside of Aiden Hill if I can. Again, I don't think he'd be offer sheeted. Sixth and a seventh from Montreal. Lekkonen's rights, but we don't know what he'd want. A fifth and a seventh from Tampa. And a fifth and a seventh from Winnipeg. I'll send him out to Winnipeg. So Aiden Hill, thank you for your service. Unfortunately, no storybook ending here. Aiden Hill is going to Winnipeg. Craig Anderson. We know he doesn't want to re-sign. Sixth rounder from either Edmonton or San Jose. San Jose is better. Craig Anderson will be dealt out west. Marcus Hogberg. Nobody wants him. Anders Nilsson. Actually does have offers. Two sevenths. Two sevenths from Washington will take it. So... A completely new goaltending setup for us at the NHL level next season. Defensively, we have Shabbat, Brandstrom. Actually, here, let's look by overall. So Shabbat, Brandstrom, Borowiecki is under contract for next year. We are going to move on from Matt Niskanen, who again wanted a raise, and that's simply just not going to happen. Sixth and the seventh right now being the best deal in terms of draft picks that we can get. I really don't want any other players back. Uh, we'll send Matt Niskanen out west to the Arizona Coyotes. I might be able to get a little bit more back in these deals, but I'm not really all that concerned. So right now, if we bring back Graves, we have Shabbat, Brandstrom, Borowiecki locked in. We have three spots left. Presumably those spots are going to Lajoie, Bernard Docker, and Thompson. I mean, really, Zaitsev's there too, though. I don't know if we have room for Ryan Graves. Because I'm not getting rid of that Zaitsev contract. No one's taking that in real life. So I think if we go Shabbat, Brandstrom, Borowiecki, Zaitsev, and then either Lajoie, Bernard, Docker, Thompson, maybe have Lajoie as the healthy scratch, I think we got to get rid of Ryan Graves. I just don't think we have the space for him. The youth movement is here. So Ryan Graves was great for us, but again, there just isn't room for him on this roster anymore. We're getting younger on defense. I'd prefer to send him out west as well. We'll send him to Dallas. Again, I really like Ryan Graves, but paying him a little bit over what we're paying him already after signing Brandstrom and what we signed him to, and it's just really... The only reason it makes sense to keep Ryan Graves is if those two younger defensemen, really those three younger defensemen, turn out to not be ready, but I think they're going to be. Ryan Graves is going to be dealt to the Dallas Stars in a move I'm not happy about, but Bernard Docker and Lassie Thompson are just about ready. Speaking of just about ready, Vancouver about ready to make their pick. I apparently can't get anything for Christian Molanen. As the Canucks make the pick, and they take Shane Wright. First overall, 83 overall, medium elite. He is ready to go out of the gates. So yeah, defensively, Shabbat, Branstrom, Borowiecki, Zaitsev, Bernard Docker, Lajoie, Thompson, and even Leah Bushkin. Those are going to be the guys to make up our defense next year. And of course, Bernard Docker and Thompson are going to be even better heading into next season, so I'm excited to see what will happen. Can I get anything for Andreas Englund? I can't. It was worth a shot. None of the guys down here will be worth anything. Uh, for the wingers, Lafreniere, Hall, Balsers, Nick Paul didn't want to stay, so we should look at shopping him if we can. Good fourth liner for us, but no real room for him. 207, 206. We'll be sending him out to the Edmonton Oilers. So, Nick Paul, his rights have at least been dealt. Again, just no room for him on this roster. Uh, Michael Carcone, Carcone, call him what you will. Uh, no value for him, unfortunately. I don't think we'd be holding on to him. For the wingers, Kachuk. I don't think we can keep Kovalchuk. I really don't think we're going to be able to keep Kovalchuk and Bobby Ryan. I'm going to ship out their rights. I mean, we have a lot of younger guys who are ready to step up. So two sixths, a fifth, and a seventh right now is the best option that we have. It'll be a fifth and a seventh from the Dallas Stars. Ilya Kovalchuk, you had an amazing season with us. 
but you are out of here. And Bobby Ryan, despite the fact that you're only going to want two million bucks or so, I don't uh, believe that you're not going to drop heavily. We're going to send your rights to the New Jersey Devils. So certainly a new era here. Kachuk uh, still intact, but aside from that, big weakness now on that left-hand side without Kovalchuk and without Bobby Ryan. We're going to see if the youth can step up as we desperately need them to do after having to make these moves and hand out some more big money deals. And down the middle here, Vlad Nemestikov's trade value is insane. I don't project we're getting rid of him. Kevin Stenland was an RFA. We'll be dropping him soon. So that pretty much does it for the moves that we're looking to make, which means our top five picks here. Again, I don't think we have the value to trade up. I'm not going to move any goaltenders just yet because we need as many options in goal as we can get. We really don't have, I mean, aside from like Jeremy Poirier, we really don't have any guys that I'm intrigued in moving just to move up in this draft. So our top five picks, if we take a look here and set up the wheel, our top five picks are going to be as you see them there. The 27th overall, the 58th, the 89th, the 118th, and the 119th. Eugene Melnick will get to select one of these or we'll get to select a player with one of these players, or one of these one of the players with one of these picks. And thankfully, we won out. I was a bit distracted there because Detroit made their selection 119th. So we won out there big time, where Melnick will be using the worst option available for him. So that is a huge victory for us here as we continue to try and offset what Melnick is doing. As you guys get a look here, I'm intrigued at who's going to be left available in this first round. There's a guy named Goalie went to Pittsburgh. Jack Hughes to Montreal. It's so weird that there's another Jack Hughes coming up. Of course, we added in a lot of real-life prospects to this draft as well. Let's see who's available. Top option appears to be Charlie Letty. But spoiler alert, I know he's not that good. So the question here... God, our scouting department sucks. Oh, our scouting department sucks. So let's see. There's Yanni Saikola. Mietnin. I don't think I trust any of those. Lou Benino. Lou Benino. Ben Ooh! A- minus physical. No weaknesses. Chelios comparison. I like that A- minus and physical. I don't really want to scroll any further down than that. Uh, Mietnin. Decent, but we can't really trust it. Lars Modine. Eh, we know he's not good. That's a medium top six. Nothing really there from Cycle, but a Murphy comparison. Maybe we'll pin him just because he has a player comparison. Rudy Timmons, nothing really there for him. A minus physicality for Recky. He has a Scott Hartnell comparison. Vieno, we know nothing about you. Uh, Franz, and we know nothing about. We didn't lose a scout this year. Our scouting department just sucks. Uh, Darren Trainer. Ooh. Could be decent. Christensen. Eh, could also be decent. Bor Ooh, Hunter Boro. Could also be good. And then Camilleri. He's not too bad. Boucher and then Letty. But I know he's got a good overall, but his potential is not great. Interesting. Out of these pinned players... The one that caught my eye, Benino and Recky for the physicality, because they might have a higher overall out of the gates. I feel like we are just about to get completely screwed here, though. I have a bad feeling about this draft pick, if I'm being honest. I really do. The reason I say that is because they're been, granted, they're uh, real life players, but. I don't know. I feel like the medium top sixes might be about to expire. Oh, God. Um, oof. Oof. I don't know. I like trainers' point totals a lot. Apparently has a really good shot three years out. I have a feeling this is going to be a super bad pick. I'm going to call a timeout really quickly. Hold on. T timeout. Timeout here, T-Mart. What can I get for this pick? 
Now that I now that I know I have the rights to trade it, what can I get for this pick on the open market? A second, a third, Murphy, Zach Parise, Hyman, Sissons, a second, a third. I want to see if there's a slam dunk option out there because I don't have a good feeling about this draft because normally when you add in a lot of real life prospects, the end of the first round into the early stages of the second round can end up being a bit weak and then you have other options show up. Like we could make a trade for Jackson Lacombe and I feel like I'd be more willing to do that. Daniel Sh Ooh, Daniel Shaka, 77. At 19 years old, we might be talking the Buffalo. Xavier Borgol is here as well. 78 at 19. I mean, even better, obviously. I mean, could argue what we need. We need forwards and defensemen moving forward. Whew, that offensive awareness from Xavier Borgo. That could. 78 at 19 right now is what we're looking at. 78 at 18 with Jeremy Wilmer. But I kind of want to use Borgo on Calgary. Chicago shopping. Taves, uh, Taves shot and Murphy normally shopping. 78 at 19, we have Zach Bullduk. Interesting. I mean, obviously the smart move is to get a created player because we know they're a little bit better in theory. Uh, Thomas Harley's a little bit out of our price range. What else do we have here? Joe Valeno is up to an 85 already. Jesus. Uh, Lavoy is there as well. Stan Coven. I think I I think I'm trading this pick. Thomas Tatar. I think I'm trading this pick. And I feel pretty confident in that decision, although you watch, we'll miss out on an amazing player. Tourist Duchene Krejci, Teddy Bluger, Kreider Giordano, Bobby Brink is a seventy seven and twenty. I think we have our option. I think I like Xavier Borgo in uh, ooh, 78 at 18. Luke Hughes, though. Mm. In theory. Although, with Tampa, I don't know if we'd be able to pull it off. We could bring in Mikhail Abramov. I think we have our option. It's either Luke Hughes or it's Xavier Borgo. On Calgary. And if this pick backfires, I would rather send it out west than trade it to a division rival. I'm going to risk this. I'm going to risk this. I'm going to move this pick. And we're going to see what happens. Because I have more confidence that this is going to pay out than I do in drafting any of those players. And this might end up being a common theme... All right, I'm not allowed to trade this pick. This might end up being a common theme because of how eh, our scouting department's going to be throughout this series. Although, apparently, we are still pretty far off in terms of value. Oof, really? Still quite far off. I thought we would have been relatively close. God, we have a lot of late picks. A lot of late picks. Let's use Dallas's fourth next year. And uh, our pick after Eugene's selection. Will that go through? Quite close to fair value. Damn it. All right. Let's use this one. Let's use this one and this one. So three fourth round picks, a fifth round pick, and the 27th overall. Done deal. So we acquire uh, someone who can appeal to the French-Canadian audience, which Ottawa doesn't do at all. And we're going to see if that was a mistake. Xavier Borgo, essentially our selection. Calgary now gets two picks in the next three. And we'll see how that worked out for them. They took Camilleri. Boucher was a medium nine. Letty was a medium top six, but a good overall. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We avoided disaster. Look at these medium nines. Whew. Oh, we avoided disaster. Okay. Ah, we could have taken Mietnin or Mitchell. Mm. Oh, okay. Ah, I don't know if I would have taken Benino or Mietnin. I still feel good about what we did. I don't. I had them pinned, but I don't think I would have taken them. There's a dude named McMuffin. Gotta love that. I think we made the smart choice. I think we did. There were players that I can't guarantee I would have picked. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. We, we did dodge a bullet. 
Now at this stage, the second round is not going to be worth much. Fitzpatrick we know nothing about. Uh, Boyer could be decent. It's a tough call. You have Sezekis. We just know we know nothing about any of these players. Jesus. Bacos is terrible. Rene Thibault. Eh. You have Haskinen. Brennan Woods. Uh, Peyton Neal, but a confirmed medium nine. Eh, that kind of sucks. Landon Thompson. Ooh. Good physicality from Landon Thompson. Kind of like that. Borowiecki could be his, uh... You know, he could be Borowiecki's protege. I mean, there are some other players here. We could take a risk with Ronick or Blackburn, but I don't really trust that. Yeah, these these drafts are going to be a real crapshoot. They are going to be a real crapshoot. With how meh this scouting department is. So I like Thompson for the physicality. There was Boyer there too. Fitzpatrick had a decent little point total. Boyer was decent as well for a defenseman in the W. But obviously, you know, the, the numbers over in Europe are never going to be that great. Peyton Neal's a safe bet. I can't believe I'm going to do this. I'm going to take Peyton Neal. And I'm going to take a decent overall medium top nine forward. He's a 64. I'm not going to risk it because I had no faith in the rest of that round being decent. And we'll see if that was the right choice. Subban was a low six, low four, low six, low six, low six, low four. Yep, I think, again, we made the right choice by being a little bit conservative with actually selecting anybody in this draft. We absolutely made the right choice. Jesus. This draft is horrible. <laughs> we get to the third round. Let's see who we have here. Henrik Lundberg. Could be decent. Carjulio, a goalie. Bjorn Bush. Guillermo Hogan. And Andrew DeNicola. Ooh, DeNicola. Potential two-year ETA. No confirmation on that, but I like that. Bouchard? Could be decent. How did Bouchard compare to the other goaltender? Schaefer's only 5'11". UC Saro special. So we have Gibbons, eh, Stan Corey. Again, we can't trust the ETA, but maybe? Brian Merritt, don't trust that at all. Jacques Desjardins, don't trust that at all. Whew, this scouting department needs some work. Marco Schantz, good shot, that's about it. Okay. We are going to be looking at any of the players that I pinned. There are three of them. A forward, a defenseman, and a goaltender. Stan Corey, 18 years old, decent point total, potential three-year ETA. You have Bouchard as another goalie. When in doubt, take the goalie. Could be another guy to add into the mix. And then there's Andrew DeNicola with a potential two-year ETA. He does care about winning, apparently. But good defense, good physical. But he's an overager, I just noticed that. When in doubt, take the goaltender. We're going to take Mario Bouchard from the St. John Sea Dogs. Ugh, medium fringe. You know what, for this draft, that's probably for the best. That is probably for the best. But did we make a mistake? Cajulio, Hogan, all decent. Nobody that I totally regret missing out on. Schaefer was a starter, but again, he's super undersized. Yeah, this draft is uh, not good. <laughs> this draft is not good. Garrison was a low elite. Medium top six steal for Toronto, but a super low overall. So we get this pick, and then not much else. Hello, Scratchtons. Merrick, Scratchtons. I like it. I like it a lot. That's the obvious pick. 19 years old. Five-year ETA, but the son of Carlos is what we're going to call that out as. Merrick, welcome aboard. 57 overall. This is Eugene's pick, and he goes for man. 
Kirkman. Kirkman. He took Kirkman, who is uh, not great. So, way to go, Eugene. <laughs> I mean, granted, he didn't exactly have a layup like I did there, so... It's not too bad. Did he miss out on anybody? Probably not. Yeah, this draft is... It is a minefield. I can't even blame Eugene for taking a low nine player. Can't blame him. So, we have a bunch of picks left. We're going to make them rather than trade. And we're going to hope for the best. Sergei Perhorkin. No real guarantee that you're any decent. Cole Tobin. Dennis Kane at 18 with a four-year ETA. He might be worth it. Pear Pedersen is horrible. Doesn't have a single defined strength. Yikes. Uh, let's see, we got Corazzini with a three-year ETA, but he's also an overager. Demetrius Tapper. Could be a decent goaltender. Yeah, this is uh, this is not this is not good. Our scouting department really shit the bed on this one, didn't they? Byron Brody. Well, Brody Bartley, a lot of Brodies. All right, let's just go. We'll take Dennis Kane, and we'll hope for the best from Kamloops Blazers. He's terrible. Remember when I said I was gonna make selections? I lied. Let's sim to our next pick, which is right here. We'll double check potential, and if there's nobody good, I am cashing out. Yeah, there is uh, there is no semblance of a guarantee here. Which means we are absolutely, positively cashing out on this draft. Because I do not trust it. So that's a lot of picks to move. But we're in no rush. We can just go ahead and move them. So, yep. Let's get rid of all of this. Anaheim. Try to give me a fourth rounder next year. And maybe a little bit more just to safety net it. What do you think? Thank you very much, Anaheim. Just go ahead and take all your picks in next year's draft. And then we own half the seventh round. In which we're going to have to talk probably with Arizona instead. And we'll see if we can get a fifth rounder for that. The answer is yes. Apparently that's a gift horse trade. Good for you. And then two more sevenths. Four. How about a sixth round pick next year, Arizona? No. All right, we'll look at like Boston's seventh rounder next year. Done deal. Okay, so we're out of this draft, which I think is a very good call. There might be a steal or two. Who's to say? Bottom line is, the draft itself wasn't that great for us, but ending up with Xavier Borgo is a decent... And am I butchering that name? Probably. I don't care. You know who I'm talking about, so it's fine. So was it a decent move? Yes. Now, goaltending-wise, Marcus Hogberg is going to be dropped. Defensively, Christian Willannon's not coming back, and Cam Deneen's contract is still, like, glitched, apparently. And then forward-wise, so Josh Norris needs to be re-signed. And we can do that for that price. He's looking literally for league men, despite being an 83 overall. Jace Howerluck, I have no problem in bringing back, especially if he'll sign for dirt cheap like that. Pinto will be signing. Stenland's gone. Uh, we can bring Nick Kamano back, if he wants to come back. Marion Studnik as well can also come back for that price. Carconi we're going to drop. There should be somebody else out there that we can bring in. So that's pretty much it. I mean, we are going to have some money to play with. Not a ton. But we should be okay. So let's see. Howard Luck signs. Norris, Studenick, Kamano. So we just got some really good young players on ridiculously cheap contracts, which I'm pretty happy about. So goaltending-wise, Marcus Hogberg, your time here is done. Thank you for your service. Jan Bednar will be signed. And Shaw will be signed. Good stuff there. Defensively, Jacob Bernard Docker will be signing his ELC. Christian Willannon, I love you, but he doesn't want to stay. Like I said, Willannon, for some reason, is just one of those players that I really like for no reason. But he wants out after spending the last three years doing pretty damn well in Belleville. So, Christian, we'll see you on the other side. Who else can we bring in? Camdenine. Eh. 
We're going to sign Johnny Tyconic first. We're not going to buy out Andreas Anglin. Good menu lag there. We'll sign Johnny Tyconic. We'll sign Jeremy Poirier. And from there, we're looking okay. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You know, I actually am going to bring back Cam Deneen. That's fine by me. We'll sign him long term. And then we're not going to need that much in terms of uh, other players being signed. So defensively, we're looking okay. Now, our projected spend is $64 million. So we have roughly... $12 million to spend here in free agency, which is looking pretty good. Uh, let's just go to forwards. So, I mean, could we have signed Ryan Graves? Probably. Kevin Stenland, you are out of here by decree of Eugene. Shane Pinto will be signing his ELC. I might sign, Na you know, I actually am probably going to sign Ludwig Naslund as well, and we'll play him in the AHL next season. Who else do we have? Pilar also needs to be signed. So there's a pretty big youth movement coming into the AHL. So with that, Michael Carconi is going to be dropped. We're going to sign Stepan. We are going to give Fair and Hornquist opportunities as well, despite my uh, better judgment. Uh, Stock needs to be signed. Wow, yeah, we're signing a lot of young dudes here. Uh, and then Vico at a medium nine can also be signed. Bonvi as well. Yeah, this is crazy. We had a lot of young players to sign. So, let's sim four today. Let's see what we got. So, Deneen signs. Nasland. Tyconic rejected. Apparently, I have a full roster. Pinto signed. Poirier. Bernard Docker. Bednar. Shaw. Stepan. Hornquist. Fair. Bonvi. Vico. Pilar. Stock. Yeah, we're up to 49 contracts. Whew, so, who's expiring at this point? No forwards, just Tyconic. So uh, re-signing Camden Eam was the wrong choice, and that means if we want to sign anybody in free agency, we have to make moves, obviously. Hmm. So it's either we lose Johnny Tyconic, which I don't really want to do, or we buy somebody out. And it can't be Kapanen. So we'd probably be looking at Gwinnett or Engeland. If I buy out Andreas Engeland, two years, a little bit over a quarter of a million. Not that I want to buy out Andreas Engeland, but it's not going to cost us that much. And he is the guy to get rid of right now. At least that I can think of. Lowest overall. Like Captain can't go anywhere, at least not until his ELC is up. And he was on an ELC slide from the looks of it. There was Bonvi. Scott Sabrin's obviously going nowhere. So yeah, Gwinnett looks to be the lowest overall at the highest age. I think we're going to drop Maxence Gwinnett. Seventh round pick in 2019. Eh, you know, actually, I want to give him a chance. Andreas Englund, I hate to say it. Uh, we're going to buy you out to make sure that I can sign one Johnny Tyconic. And that deal should be done, and it is. So with that, we have a full roster heading into free agency. Some players are going to have to be moved for us to make room, which is fine. We drop Char as a scout. I might bring him back. Of course, I'll handle the scouting off-screen, or the staff department off-screen. But in free agency, with a grand total of 13, just a little bit under $13 million to spend, available on the open market, for goaltenders, the leader is Darcy Kemper on a steal of a contract. Holtby's also looking for a dirt cheap contract. We're not going to get involved in the RFA market with those options. But in terms of dirt cheap options, Darcy Kemper, Braden Holtby. I mean, there are some good options here. Even like Rene or Lundqvist as a veteran, but also Thatcher Demko is there. Tristan Jari is looking for a dirt cheap contract. Carter Hutton, Francis, Francois, Francois, call him what you will. Merz Leakins. Let's take a look here. So Kemper last year was fantastic in 21 games played. Braden Holtby, not so much as a backup. He's going to be looking for a bit of a redemption story. Uh, Pekka Rene, decent. Lunkvist, eh. Demko was rough. Tristan Jari was okay. 
Francis was phenomenal. Merzlikin struggled. And then you have the likes of James Reimer, who was awful. Jonathan Bernier, of course, won a Calder Cup. So, and Linus Allmark had a 909 wherever he played. So i got to be honest, I mean, I like the idea of, I mean, Pavel Francouz had really good numbers and a pretty good record. Carter Hutton was solid. There are some pretty good options there in goal to bring in. And there was also a medium elite prospect that we could uh, give a shout to. Also, you have someone like Ivan Prosvetov, who's a 77 at 23 years old, but he's a high fringe. And you also have someone like Dan Vladar. So there are a lot of options on the goalie market. It just depends on how unproven we want to go. And if you look right now at our goaltending setup, we only have four goalies signed. We have room for two other goaltenders right now. I mean, it could result in Bednar being the healthy scratch in the AHL. But say we bring in, if one of these two are NHL ready, which Gustafson will probably be, we could bring in a Holtby, somebody else is a healthy scratch, and have Gustafson be the backup. And then the AHL can be uh, Shaw, Shogard, and Bednar as the backup. A lot of options there. I definitely want your opinion on that. Defensively, we didn't even look at the open market here. But we already know. You know. I mean, this defense is basically set. The only way it's not is if we say that we're going to commit to playing Bernard Docker or Lassie Thompson in the AHL for one more season. Which we could do. Is that a smart move? I don't know. Defensively, I mean, do we want to pay Darnell Nurse $7 million? I don't know. Do we want to pay Butcher, Ristolainen, or Zach Wierenski, who's an RFA, so he's off the table? But do we want to pay Risto, you know, Butcher, or Petrie five million bucks? I don't think we do. Over prioritizing the development of some of our younger players. So I don't think we're going to go for anybody on this defensive market. And in terms of prospects, uh, there is nobody. Yaros and Englund, go figure. So. I think defensively we're perfectly fine. We don't need to make a single move for anybody on the defensive side of things. We're going to trust who we have already uh, to continue to develop. So I think we're good there. Forward-wise, obviously because Banajad was there, he is out of our price range. Unless he were to go down to $9.3 million, which on the open market, I doubt it. Uh, Evgeny Malkin, Eric Stahl, Gusev... I mean, you see Kovalchuk and Duclair's out there again. You know, you see some of the names that are available and the money that they're looking for. Like, yeah, Nazem Kadri and Oliver Bjorkstrand not looking for all that much. Bushnevich isn't looking for all that much. Miles Wood and Sven Berchke. In terms of potential, you have Greilinger as a low elite who will be worth going after. Uh, we could also sign this other Zabanajad or Suglobov if we wanted to try and get a low six to develop, which rarely happens. So there aren't that many crazy prospect options out there. So looking at what the forward setup is right now, and what we're projected to look like heading into next season, I mean, obviously, we're going to have Kachuk, Lafreniere, and Nemesnikov, Hall, White, and Brown. Brown would probably be third liner. Norris, Formanton, Howerluck. Balser, Schlappick, Batherson. I mean, we're still going to have too many spots for too few players with the young guys that we have on the roster. So you got to remember, if we bring in a big name out there, you know, or bring back even a Kovalchuk because he wanted to come back, it's going to take a spot away from somebody else younger on the roster that could potentially use it. So some interesting decisions to make. You guys obviously get a voice. I want to hear from you. What do you think is the best way to go about this? But it's obvious there's going to be a youth movement on this team heading into next season. The biggest toss-up right now is goaltending and what that's going to look like. For now, though, that'll do it for this one. Hope you enjoyed. Again, a lot of questions in this offseason heading into the next one as well. We'll see how that goes down. But for now, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you did, hey, drop a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out everything in the description. That includes the Twitch where we stream every single day for the most part. Sometimes we miss a day. You never know. 
And, uh, of course, a shout-out to my, uh, my friends on Patreon. I love each and every one of you. It might be a bit of a slim week for the Houston series on that side of things. I'll try to keep you guys updated as best I can. I love you all. Until next time, have a good one. Take it easy. Stay safe. And I'll catch you then.